Hi, my name is Tyler, and this is Aftertouch Audio. In this video, we're gonna go through everything you'll need to sound design your very own ice magic spells. If you've ever watched Avatar The Last Airbender, the animated series, not the terrible live action movie, then you may have noticed that water bending and ice bending are closely related. And that is mostly true for magic systems in games. Where there is ice, there is water. We will be briefly touching on water magic in this video, but if you're looking for a more detailed guide on water magic, check out our ultimate guide to water magic in up uh, there. <laughs> Unlike our earth magic guide, the choice of source material for ice is very large, very loose, and quite creative. So let's go over some of my favorite sources to work with when designing ice magic. And let me know what are some of your favorite sources in the comment section below. I would love to learn more from everyone. Real ice. Breaking, cracking, scraping, debris, etc. Dry ice. Liquid nitrogen. Glass shards. Tonal glass. A large variety of metal. Small metal bits. Compressed air. Cold wind samples. Styrofoam. Aluminum foil, paper bags, ice foil, all different types of plastic, wind chimes, wooden stress, small rocks falling, rain, cornstarch, and synthetic textures. If you would like to skip the sampling process, I have linked some of my favorite libraries in the description below that will get you up and running right away. Ice, just like fire, have very similar processing styles. You're really looking to bring out that high-end sparkly energy and increase sharpness. But when it comes to layering effects, you'd be surprised on how little you actually need to get the ice sounding like ice. When I'm designing sounds, I chalk most of my creative decisions down to sample choice. I really want to find or record sounds that come close to what I'm trying to design, rather than running the samples through dozens of different plugins and effects, though sometimes that is necessary. When I was designing the spell, I went through dozens of layer revisions, trying to find or record samples that worked for the layers that I was designing for. I ended up splitting the sound up further and further until I got something close to what I was aiming for, but... Before we get too far into that, let's go over some of the processing that was used to create the spell and bring out some of those icy textures. Using a multiband limiter like the ML8000 is a great tool to help accent frequency ranges that you would like to bring out in your layers. For example, if you would like to bring out the high end of a sound more, you can limit the upper bands and then boost the limited frequencies, while leaving the rest of the frequency spectrum untouched. If you are using glass elements in your design, it can be really handy to reverse these elements to create a sharp magic crystal-like sound. This also works really well for designing charging up or power down sounds. Transient shapers usually come with two controls, an attack and a sustain control. Sometimes they come with a pump control as well. Bringing the attack all the way up to the right increases the transient information while bringing the sustain all the way to the left reduces everything that happens after the transient. Using transient shapers can really help bring out the crunchy textures from your styrofoam, glass, and wood stress. Just be careful not to overdo it and place limiters after them. Reverb has a few uses. It can be used to place any sound in a space. It can also help mix your elements together, and it can also be used to create crystal-like magical textures. Combining reverb and reversing helps create that dreamy-like magical sound, but it also helps accentuate these sharp transients. You can add a large amount of reverb to vocal efforts in order to create that larger-than-life feeling. <sighs> I cover this topic more in depth on my How to Get Punchy Transients video, but the basic principle is to cut out any tails that are not needed, and to cut out any sounds just before the transient to help them pop through. <laughs> this helps free up space in your frequency spectrum, helps make things a lot more clearer, gives you more punchier transients, and as well, cleaning up mud in your mix. 
Just like all of our previous Magic episodes, you can actually create ice-related samples using nothing but a synth. Thanks, Aftertouch. Whenever I have to design a new sound, I usually start out at Freesound. Freesound.org is a free repository of various sounds. It's a great way to preview what something should sound like. I think I have a few ideas for this. Starting out in Phase Plant, we're just going to start with white noise into the new granulator module. We're going to set most of the controls to halfway and set all of the grain envelopes to simple decay envelopes. And then we're going to bandpass, compress, and use a convolver for a large reverb. While that last one was entirely synthetic, this next one is not. This uses a sample of me breaking glass that I recorded with my phone. In both cases, we're going to be modulating the granulator and filter. This could still use something interesting. Give me a second. Okay, with a new module installed, we're going to have plates running into Polaris to create what I call a 3A1L filter. It is effectively a bandpass filter combined with a one-pole low-pass, and then we're going to run that into Monsoon to granulate the sound. Plates is generating a sort of sparkly granulated noise cloud. And now we combine them. These first three are the sounds that we've made today. This sound is from a library, and the rest of these I've made in the past for various other projects. Combined, I think they sound pretty good for a nice magic sound. Feel free to play with these techniques and experiment. See what you can come up with. Thanks, Averith. If you would like to know more about synthesis, I highly encourage checking out her blog, where she breaks down synthesis in a way where you can make just about any sound. I've also collaborated with Daniel Burroughs, who runs Sounds Good, to break down one of his ice magic spells using his new sound effects library. Thank you so much for the invitation, Tyler. It's really an honor to be here. And let's watch the clip I redesigned before we dive in the project. I start by adding a bit of movement to go along with the time warp effect by controlling uh, the pitch of this wind ambience, this wind blowing through the trees. Then I start to layer the elements of the character preparing the attack. We need a cool freezing sound effect, as well as the sound of the blade magically resonating. And for that, I'm combining these two clips here to get this effect. And together, they sound like this. Now the next layer here is a combination of sharp wishes to bring life to the movement of his axe behind his back. So I have these here. But you can also hear there is a nice metallic tone there. If we hear the original file, it's just a whoosh. And the trick I'm doing here is to add a notch filter to each of these clips. So I'm boosting some of the harmonics to create this metallic texture. If I use the same notch filter in all of the clips, it's going to sound very dull. So I, for each of the clips, I change a little bit the harmonics that are being emphasized here. I'm also applying to this whole track here a frequency shifter and uh, this high pass filter because I just want this to sound a little bit lighter uh, than the whoosh that comes next when Kratos hits the ground, which is our next layer. I'm not doing anything fancy in this one because I think it sounds good enough. It has this uh, nice beginning of ice forming, a large sharp whoosh and a cool metallic ring that it's layering really well with the other stuff so far. Let's hear them all. Sounds really cool. Okay, so now it comes the big hit on the ground. So we need a, to add a nice stompy and heavy hit with large pieces of ice cracking. And I also want to make sure that there's something to go along with this icy shockwave that follows the hit. I layered three sound effects here. The first one is a glacial spike. Sounds heavy enough. The second one is uh, a sound effect that I designed for uh, a frozen armor type of spell. But here is adding a cool build up sound and it helps to sell the impact of the blade on the floor. And the third one is a wind gust. And when we play everything together, it sounds like this. Next part is just the sound of ice cracking as the character tries to remove the axe stuck in the ground. Uh, one layer uh, for the thicker and harder ice. And another one with a more crystal-like sound. When the axe is finally removed from the ground, kind of like a finisher hit here, I wanted this impact to contrast with the ground hit. 
uh, something like a kick and snare dynamic. So this one had to sound richer in the mid and high end of the spectrum. And to do this, I'm layering a sound effect designed for a Frost Nova. Two Ice Shards Impact. As you can see here, one of them uh, is in the same track uh, in which I'm applying the frequency shifter and also the that high pass filter because I just want the high end. We have an ice explosion and an ice blast. Playing from the beginning, everything sounds like this. Oh, and there's also a reverb that is covering everything. All these samples are from a library that I've recently designed called the Frost Mage. This is the first sound pack of an upcoming collection called the Elemental Warlock. I've also added here other stuff to create a bit of detail, a bit of my own voice, <laughs> and some stuff from my other library called Deadly Combat. Some grabs, body falls, and a gruesome hit. I'd like to thank Tyler again and Aftertouch Audio. This was uh, really fun to do and I really hope we can do more of these. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks Daniel. Check out his recent sound effects packs Frost Mage and keep an eye out for his future releases Lightning, Water and Fire Magic. Now let's break down my spell. <laughs> I've broken my spell down into nine different layers. Voice, cast, build, wind, damage, water explosion, ice explosion, aftermath, and backgrounds. The cast layer contains most of my water textures, including running my hands through water, some clicky bubbles, and some underwater whooshes. I also included a metal pipe being dragged on smooth concrete to help accentuate the hand movements a little more. I also included a decasting sound at the very end as she brings her hands back towards herself, which includes some water whooshes and some more watery textures. The build layer has a few moving components to it, but it mainly focuses on sounds we created in the Magical Textures video, with some ice elements to give information to the player as to what type of spell we are actually casting. Reversed bells, bowed glass, some synthetic textures, glass crunching, and some general water movements we'll all use on the first part of the build. But for the second part of the build layer, I added lots of reverse glass crunching, all at different pitches, some metal scraping, a sword drawn, and I even added a katana draw, which ended up being the main focal point of the ice spell. So much of sound design is constant communication with the audience member, whether that is through location or through elements. What I wanted to communicate with this spell is ice, water, and cold. But how do you communicate cold? Well, I went with a few cold style winds when the spell first activates and when the ice forms around the enemies. The damage layer is fairly straightforward. I added some ice impacts as well as some sword impacts to let the player know that they are dealing damage during this part of the spell. And I also added two sounds from Daniel's ice magic pack. The water impact layer contains an explosion from Tonstrom's massive explosion pack, a couple geysers going off, some water movements, three layers of rain that gets progressively wider as the water falls towards the ground, and two water on concrete layers that I've increased the stereo width by 200% so that they only hit the left and right speakers. This helps emphasize the explosion's reach. For the ice impact layer, I added lots of ice crunching all at different pitches, a cinematic low bassy impact to simulate an explosion, two massive glass impacts, and some magical textures to help bring up that sparkly sound from the ice. For the aftermath layer, we start off with some ice cracking and some sparkly elements, but as the ice melts, we transition into sizzling, a river flowing, and some rain to help accent that the ice is melting. My backgrounds just consist of some prairie nature and some birds every now and then.
It is worth noting that while the spell is going on, I did duck the volume of the backgrounds as they were not the main focus of the design. Though I did not get rid of them all as it helps keep everything grounded in reality. As usual in my redesigns, I like to add vocal layers to my designs as it really helps amp up the intensity and makes a spell sound a lot more powerful. <laughs> Thank you very much for having a watch. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel, joining our Discord server, or checking out our sound effects shop where we have dozens of royalty-free sound effects libraries catered for your professional needs. Now, go make some noise.